Yeah, hello. Yeah. So, so to begin with, so the whole objective of this video is not exactly to uh, create a tutorial or to create something where people can learn. So this I am trying to make where I am just uh, going to learn something new and then I am going to record it and then I am going to publish it, uh, whatever I have learned by explaining it. So right now I'm just making this is my first video, and then I'm just making it because one, uh, as as I get the feedback, I want to start something like a live streaming. So where I get to uh, do more on whatever I'm learning, doing something, breaking something apart, or understanding something, reverse engineering something. So and then I I should be able to do a live streaming where it's more of people can uh, give a feedback or give ideas so it's more of a collaborative effort which i'm trying to build something so no there's no specific uh, agenda and it's not something i have planned uh, it's something i just random idea came and then i'm just giving it a shot yeah so that today i'm going to uh, learn uh, how exactly the jtag uh, not the jtag sorry uh, the swd protocol works so SWD is like your hardware uh, debug protocol. Uh, for example, if you have known hardware debug protocol like JTAG. So the problem with the uh, JTAG is like it consumes a lot of GPIO. Like it needs at least four uh, pins to communicate with it. Uh, so that we can, uh, uh, I can explain it in, in some other day. So today I'm going to talk about SWD. SWT is slightly a bit more uh, abstract, one more abstraction layer above your uh, JTAG. So it uses uh, two pins, your SWT uh, IO and then your SWT clock. So this is your uh, input output. Uh, it's bi-directional and then your clock for your synchronization. So the board which I'm going to use, use is your, called as blue pill and it is based on STM32 F103. It's an ARM Cortex M3. Now I have already connected my uh, blue pill with the FTDI in SWT configuration. So you can just check. It's connected. Now let's take a rod dump. So this is my logic analyzer. I have set it to 12 million sample per second with 30 seconds. Uh, and also if you notice the speed I have set it to 125 uh, kilohertz uh, because since I am using the logic analyzer I don't need to set the sample rate to way too high to avoid any of the uh, losing any of the data yeah. so let's start the sniffing start and then I will just I will just connect it. It basically connects and then it tells like hardware S6. Uh, one second, I'll let me stop this before it takes the RAM. Yeah, tells like there's four watch point, six breakpoint, and then it has some IT which is 26A0147. It says like it's a STM32 F1 uh, CPU. And then now we can stop it. And then here you can see there is a lot of data that's being transmitted. Let's just focus on some parts of it okay i think i already have the debug i will remove it so here you can see there are a lot of this looks like your clock pulse this looks like your uh, data line so now let's get a little bit into the theory part i know it's the boring part now i already have the arm specifications open so this the document is called as uh, ARM debug interface. Its version is ADI, uh, I think 5.2. And if you go to the index page, we have all the other protocol also. Today we are just going to focus on the SWDP. This gives you, I mean, I know reading specification is boring but they are once you know how to read a specification it's the best place to look for any resource you don't need to even google for anything and this is the serial wire debug protocol it has a lot of information like key 
uh, key to illustration to ap approach i think yeah this is for a successful write operation i think and there is something called a successful read operation and that they have given some uh, example operation to see your clock pulse your start some parity stop park some trn trn ack w data r data i think they are just a abbreviation of what is what your starting bit it's a debug port or access port this is boring so i found another resource where it's slightly bit more human understandable this is from another one from e efm32 it's similar to stm32 but it's from a different vendor yeah so it has uh two wires your swdio and then swdio clock and this is bidirectional which means the both the uh, host and the target can talk to each other in one, just one single line and then you have your swd debug port and then your ahp access port and then your that's internally connected to the all the memory port or or maybe the peripherals it depends upon which uh, bus you are talking about and then so this is the swd the first part yeah so swd clock is always driven by the host both sides will drive the stripd io to send the data so clock is always by host and then dio is by your uh, it can be both from your host and your target and if it is high it's one low if it is zero okay standard so three differential phase okay there are three different different phases are specified so each phase begins with a host sending a request okay first the host sends the request that's your debugger that sends the request to the target and then the target answers with an acknowledgement which is followed by the data phase so who controls the line during the data phase determine what type of request obviously so if you are sending a write request then your data is be controlled by the host if you are sending a read request then the data is going to be uh, from the target and everything is transmitted using lsb so this is how your this the request payload looks like uh, you have your start start bit and then your apdp so start bit is always one so apdp basically tells you whether it's a debug port uh, transaction or the access port transaction the next one tells you the address where exactly the no, next one is read and write sorry next one read and write tells you whether whatever the request is a read write as you mentioned before uh, whether you want a request for id code or you want a request for a specific flag or if you want to read from the flash memory the location i think these are all defined by these uh, things and then your address and then your parity standard your order even parity the l number of ones and then more number of zeros and then your stop bit that is always zero and then your last bit is called as park bit which is one so after this it's preceded with acknowledgement which consists of three bits uh it has a value one since it's put on lsp first okay response will looks like 1 followed by 20 which means after this it has to be 100 host must continue to clock for the next 8 cycle before the data phase to make sure his clock clock is clocked from stwt uh, tp okay so this is how your standard write up write command looks like so this for write command so basically it's the starting which is i'm guessing it's going to be 1 uh, in this case it's again dp 100 0, 0, and then whatever the location you want to read it from parity 1 or 0 based upon whatever you see here stop is 0 park is this and then we have something called as tm your acknowledgement which we saw earlier 1 and then your two zeros and then you are in there is some tm and then whether it's uh, your write data which what exactly to write and let's see what is tm tm is your turn around period so each time it has to change direction 
so one clock period is inserted which both uh, sides should ignore which means for every after every uh, request one clock cycle will be rejected by both the end yeah similarly for similarly for this one and similarly for this one now initialization so before using the SWD on the d-pad so what you have to do is like first send a reset so reset is basically 50 clock cycle with the DIO high which is basically 1111151s and then uh, you have to send a JTAG to SWD yeah I think by default I think it works on JTAG uh, so if you want to switch it from JTAG to SWD maybe you have to send a specific code and then it's the target switches from JTAG to SWD and then you send another line reset and then you uh, do a read the ID code register so read the ID code register format is basically this one one zero and then read one and then your zero zero I think is for getting the ID code parity and then your uh, zero stop and parking bit so here it's just like the address is zero zero is for the ID code and then we have other control registers which we will discuss it at some time so now we have some uh, understanding let's look for other resource where we can get little bit more extra information so this is another bug which I noticed which they have actually made it really nice this is all your data I think this is for I don't know one 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 okay which is basically start bit one read and then again one 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 zero okay this is your ADP read or write and then your address parity your stop bit and then this is your park bit and then your uh, what is it called turnaround period your turnaround period so turnaround period is just one single clock pulse so even during that period the data is going to be just this one but which is not actually considered and then so if you also notice so here the it starts in this way if you have noticed yeah so in this case CHP is 0 this is 1 which means your starting is starts from like this and then if it is I think this is from the host to target debugger to the target which means it has the clock pulse has to start the data has to be start from this and then if it is so that is where we are using this bit to uh, configure that in such a way the next one is starts from here so here you can see this is 1 so this will be considered as 1 and then from here it's 0 0 and then one zero zero. this is your acknowledgement part and then your 32 bit data your parity I think and then more request pay uh, payload this we got a little bit more information so if the uh, we are stuck with somewhere you can always come back and then you can check what is what is what so there are a lot of other which says like protocol version TP bank select I think bank select is for yeah I think this is something uh, which you have to go in depth now let's go to the data and then check yeah so here we are first what first thing which we saw here is initialization initializing yeah perform the line reset so this is your line reset which is basically 50 clock pulse and then your SWDIO line as one and then this is I guess your JTAG to SWD uh, switching uh, command and then another uh, line reset 50 clock pulse and one and then you here comes the main part so this is always your request starts with one and then this is it starts as one zero one is your starting bit and this is for I think what is this for 
read let's check no okay that is for uh, i think dp that's your dpac port and then your read and then your 004 id code register your parity stop bit and then your stop bit and then your park bit and then here we are going to switch uh, one clock cycle so till here and then uh, yeah. so and then we have will stop here and then from here it will be considered as one pulse that is your one acknowledgement and then two zeros one zero zero and then from here the things are going to be changed and if you look at here so in the second graph we saw that he, so till here it stops here so we have to stop it here and one for the one from the device so it starts from here so it starts here and then it starts from this one where this is basically your uh, one zero now this is your 32 bit data maybe this could be another sequence maybe another sequence so obviously the logic has its own decoder DIO is your one I don't know why my tool acts weird yeah now it's becomes more easier but here the whole point is how you actually reverse a protocol when you don't have any information here so I generally uh, write it down in a notepad uh, all the 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01 and then I correlate it with uh, whatever I, I read from the certification. So your line reset, this is not mentioned, maybe it's not part of the SWT I guess. And then line reset and then you have your request for read ID code, your turnaround time acknowledgement 100 your 32 bit data your parity and then you have another request dp underscore abort maybe that is something else some other uh, maybe you can check in the specification of what that is which is like write underscore ok that's the write abort which means we are writing something to the abort part now let's if I mean we can just check here let's just check this part I'll not go into all the specifications or all the commands let's see if we have some register so they have a I think it's internal yeah so they have a okay so this is your ID code and then your abort I'm not sure why that what abort is used for let's keep searching it is basically let's check debug port abort okay so they have this yeah so abort purpose is to force a AP transaction to abort maybe this is basically tells uh, let's not assume anything it's a write only register you cannot read uh, so it's access to one chain so I just do write to officer access to by write to officer DP register that's fine okay this is the thingy write one is to stick your run I think there are a lot of things which I need to check so basically this the objective of this particular uh, request is to stop any application process that is maybe uh, running maybe if your device is running something which means you are telling that okay fine debug is right now uh, running maybe stop something yeah so yeah that is one so I mean similarly you can go to the specification and then you can see like all the ORN uh, error clear WDR1 these are the different registers uh, each byte in the register which you have to configure and then similarly we have request tp write uh, select maybe this will also have a specific meaning 
so you just have to compare it with for start, for understanding the basic you can go with any resource that's there in the internet but to go a little bit in there it's really advisable to uh, check the specification other parts there will be a lot of uh, false information uh, will be there yeah so i think i will uh, end this part I, I know it's not very in depth so i just cover a little bit of what what is there in the swd part uh, yeah so again this objective i think i've already mentioned so objective is not to create a tutorial but more to more of how exactly i have uh, how exactly i understand a specific protocol or how exactly i uh, let's say uh, take you through how exactly I learned something or explain it in the way which I understood again whatever I am learning it would it may or may not be uh, correct or proper so your feedbacks are welcomed or I may be reading something in a wrong manner or I may be uh, learning in a wrong way so I want you people to tell me like which part I have messed up or which is something which I have understood in a, in a wrong way so my objective is more of uh, for me personally to learn in a more collaborative effort and then future i'll be maybe doing the same thing in a live streaming uh, youtube live streaming or whatever and then it's people interacting interacting and then maybe collaborating with multiple people to learn something new or teach people something new so yeah so that and this is not something which i have planned this video so it's just a, a random thought which came like in the early morning it's seven o'clock in the morning here yeah so yeah so that should be it for this video and then please do leave a feedback or if i messed up something please do let me know and thank you so much